I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt. Once again, watch about to another review. This is another paid request, this time from Anthony. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, whether it be a topic, reaction, review, re-review, randomness, out of the blueness, what have you, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I will try to get to it as soon as I can. And this is for... <laughs> Can't call it a classic, but... Samurai Cop, a very bad movie, but I gotta admit, it's an entertaining film. It's like, I'm not usually the type of guy that goes to that whole, so bad it's good. Either I sincerely enjoy it, or I s sincerely think it's a piece of shit. But there are films that go in that category. Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, Little Bit of Troll 2... Uh, Don't Go in the Woods, which is an 80s slasher film. This would be in there. Because at the I wasn't bored. Now, this got a bit of fame because Red Letter Media, they talked about the film. They interviewed the star of the film. And then that led to a sequel coming out for this. But it's a sequel that... It's, they're in on the joke. So then they're purposely being bad, which makes it a lot less funny and a lot less endearing. That's what people don't understand. When you're not doing it on purpose, that makes you more endearing. And you can tell they're not doing it on purpose, which makes it even funnier. When you keep winking every five minutes, like Samurai Cop 2 did, that it, it makes it less funny. This, though... Number one, this covers bullshit. And I saw this way before Red Letter Media did their video. Way before it. I got this DVD around mid... Probably this time... It might have been 10 years ago? It's been a while. Be the reason I got this was because I was collecting all the DVDs that had this guy... Joe Bob Briggs doing commentary. Because there was a couple of years there where Joe Bob Briggs, who I remember from Monster Vision on TNT, he hosted these movies, mainly horror films, once in a while a non-horror film. On Monster Vision, on TNT, yes, they're edited, but he would pop it in and out between commercials, either give the drive-in totals, how many dead bodies, how many breasts were in it. And he had these fun interstitials where we talked about the film, either making fun of the film, trying to give info about the film. And I'm like, wow, he did commentaries? And I collected as much as I could. He did the Double D Avenger. He did Hell High. He did this film called The Chooper, also known as Blood Shack. He did... I Spit on Your Grave. 
which I don't like the film, but I do like his commentary because I think he's a funny and very informative guy who knows his business about the... And this commentary is worth it. Even if you don't like the film at all, even if so bad it's good. And most of the films he did are shit. They're shit. Hell High is pretty decent. This is funny in a bad way. He did a couple like biker movies. I have them over there. But his commentaries are very fun. Very fun. He did like, Blood Sisters was another one. And they're pretty damn funny. And they're worth it just to listen to his commentary. There's also an interview with Robert Zadar. Robert Zadar. He was the Maniac Cop in Maniac Cop 1, 2, and 3. He was also in Tango and Cash. Sally's no longer with us, but he did do an interview with this before he passed away. And yeah, this cover is a lie. No one ever wears this uniform. The movie's not as gore as it makes it sound. Well, I would like to see this movie that this cover showcases, because it's not the movie. You have the right to remain silent. Dead silent. Like, this is a movie you can remake, but do what's on the fucking cover. More than likely, this got made with this title is because they got Robin Zadar. Robin Zadar is the maniac cop. Okay, we call our hero Samurai just because he's got a sword once in the blue moon. Oh, call a Samurai Cop. Kitchy title. I mean, yeah, this is a bad movie. I'll read the bat. The Katana gang is out of control in LA. They're involved in everything from gambling to extortion to drugs. The police are stuck in their efforts to take the Japanese mob down. They brought in an expert, Joe Marshall, nicknamed the Samurai, an expert in Japanese culture and martial arts. He gets with this other guy, Frank, played by Mark Frazier. I believe the character's name is Frank. And <laughs> it's directed poorly, it's edited poorly. You can tell there's certain scenes where Matt Hannon's hair keeps changing, or you can tell he's wearing a wig, or there's one point where he's at an editing bay. And then he has a cap, and you tell like it's like fake hair, because that was additional photography they did later. Uh, there's a lot of bad dubbing of characters. I think a lot of them, like the supporting characters, like little small roles, henchmen. There's one guy who's like editing, looking at film or something. I think like the director put a lot of those voices in, and then the actual main actors. Rob Zadar, I don't know if he's trying to be Japanese or what he's trying to do with his look and his voice. Uh, Gerald Akamura, who's one of the bad guys in Big Trouble Little China, he's in this. Matt Hannon, the lead. He's a guy here with the, the long hair, if you can see him. And then this is Mark Frazier, which they got his shirt off, and they're going to leave you of this gift, this black gift. And there's Mark Frazier with his shirt off, the, the black partner. The black guy does not die, though. The black guy does not die. So there is that. And he actually you know, it does help out. So you go, progressive. But, I mean, like, the acting is horrible. Matt Hannon is not much of a fire. If you, who the hell is Matt Hannon, the lead, the samurai cop? He was Sylvester Stallone's bodyguard. That's who he was in real life. He was Sylvester Stallone's bodyguard around the time of Rambo 3 and Tango and Cash. And there's like, hey, I want to see if I can do a movie. Because I with Stallone and he has all these connections and he knows all these people. So, let's see if I can break into movies. That didn't happen. Maybe he should have stuck being Sylvester Stallone's bodyguard. I don't know. Although, if this is the way he fights, he wouldn't do shit as a bodyguard. <laughs> but I'm just saying. But it's bad acting, but it's kind of, it's fun bad acting. Same with Mark Frazier as the partner. I don't even know, I mean... 
Matt Hannon does not look like a samurai cop. As Joe Bob Bird says it, he looks like a Chippendales pool boy dancer. The Order Katana people with a lot of gravelly voices. Uh, the first fight of a game fight is like an 18 second kung fu fight. <laughs> The first time our heroes are on a bust, they call him for the helicopter, this lady, and it's like sexual banter where Matt Hannon's like, you keep, no, like she's going, you keep it up. Oh, it's up. You keep it warm. I'll keep it warm, warm and ready. She's talking about her pussy. There's the... Speeding up the film during action and fight scenes, like during a car chase. And then the music is this like intense non-stop Casio music. This is like shit I would hear on the NES. Like the shitty, like, <laughs> but it is Casio music. The... Again, when people get shot, they go out the van because the cops are chasing this van. You can tell the speeding up the film like T-Stone Cops thing. One guy they set on fire. And then, like, the guy's on fire and it's, it's just his back. And when the guy's on the ground, you see his head just looking. Like, anyone will put me out? And the actor's, like, unsure to put him out. So they're taking their sweet time, which I'm sure the stunt guy loved that. <laughs> there you got your sex and titties in there there's like three four sets of titties in this uh, there's weird angles like there's this girl not the the police woman that we see Manhattan first have sex with another girl that Manhattan several cops has sex with <clears throat> so I guess he forgets about her so what a great guy so this other girl was the bad guy's girlfriend, mistress, whatever the fuck. But, you know, gets into the realms, the hands of the samurai cop. But there's times where they frame her talking and there's this weird fucking stuffed teddy bear looking lion head. Like a stuffed lion head, plushy, like the fucking scream. Stream, stream, it made me want to stream. What the fuck is that lion head? It's not an actual lion head, it's not like a, it's literally like a plushie. It takes so much of the stream. A weird fucking thing. Or, like when Rob is a dar and this evil lady, they gotta go kill the guy that the cops got that they set on fire and then they put him out. To arrest him, I guess. Well, he's in the hospital. He's covered head to toe in bandages, but the blood is seeping through the fucking bandage. So I guess they don't change the shit. And then the evil lady has a laundry basket that Robin Zatar is hiding in the laundry basket. And they there's a trash can in there, too. And they, they saw the guy's head off and put the head in the trash can away. Or maybe he was hiding the trash can. I don't know. And you get weird bits of dialogue. Like at the hospital. Matt Hannon. Who plays Joe Marshall. The samurai cop. How the fuck do I even talk about this? The nurse keeps asking him questions. And then she goes. Would you like to fuck me? And then samurai cops like. Takes the stethoscope. Sure. Oh, no, I think he says bing bingo. And then she, like, touches his crotch and goes, nothing there. Nothing there? Well, what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? And as this whole conversation is talking, it keeps coming back to the partner doing, like, Were you were you circumcised? Oh yeah, but believe me, it's big. I want bigger. 
What the fuck was this about? Is this... They, of course, the cops had the yelling boss. Who yells a lot louder than other captains in action movies. You son of a bitch. You come back here, you motherfucker. And there's like a moment in the film he keeps pointing. I guess because the director didn't know what the fuck cut meant. You come back here, you motherfucker. Like, the guy wouldn't say cut, so he... And I gotta mention the big speech when he talks to the bad guys. The one guy who's got a like crazy Billy Ray Cyrus bullet, and then Robin Zadar, and they're at this restaurant, and then Matt Hannon has a speech of, <coughs> Now I'm telling these sons of bitches that we respect the Japanese of this country, who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is a land of opportunity for legitimate business. Not for death merchants who distribute drugs to our children through schools and on the streets. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers that if they continue killing our children to make their precious millions that they deposit in their Swiss bank accounts. Counselor, before your last suit even gets off the course, course desk, I have their stinking bodies and garbage bags and ship them back to Japan for fertilizer. Got it? I'm sorry, I couldn't do it as well as him. But, I, like they talk to this waiter, and this waiter is very, oh, hello there. Oh, I'm from Costa Rica. I'm Uncle Lamoka, you know, but I don't do that. This is my first name. Yes, this is my first name. Woohoo. Goddamn shit. The fights are shit, but they're laughable shit. Uh, once in a while, there's a little bit of gore. Guy gets his arm chopped off at one point. But then, like, one person gets shot. It looks like fucking paintballs. A lot of times when people get shot, either you see nothing or it looks like paintballs. Uh, this does have a big body count. Like, over 50 people die in the film. Oh man, that car got blown up. It's gonna burn my ass. Yep, charcoal black. Man, I'm already black. I, this is the banter the two have. Like, what the fuck? Joe Nakamura, if you know him, if you know him from martial arts, you get to see him in his underwear two seconds away from a sex scene, but thankfully the movie cuts away so we don't see the full sex scene and him out of his underwear, which I don't need to see. I like you in Big Joe Lochan and stuff, Gerald Dr. Mora, but don't want to, I don't want to see you in your underwear, let alone out of your underwear. And he has a fight with the samurai cop, and it's a laughable fight. Uh, that's this part here. Because it's speeding up the film, and Matt Hannon is like doing the Elvis or whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> and there are times... Like, during the fight he has Robert Zadar, he has, like, what the fuck do you do? He has the fingers in, and, like, you don't punch with that or you break your fucking fingers, but... I think he did an interview with Red Letter Media, and he said he was doing some of this badly on purpose. Because he thought, well, the director won't show them. Because by this point, he was just tired of the shit. But the director's like, okay, maybe you shouldn't have done that, Matt Hannon. Whatever kind of film you're making, maybe you shouldn't do stupid shit like that. Maybe, well, maybe in this instance is for, maybe in this instance it was for the better because it made it funnier. Um, also, I found it funny that Jared Akamura in his place, he just happened to have a Defender arcade machine there. I, I don't think a Jared Akamura... Well, why not? Defender... Anyone can play RT Machine. I'm like, oh shit, there's an RT Machine. This isn't even... They speed up the film. And like when they kill Jared Akamura, my hand's like, well, this one's dead too. And not taken into custody. No fucking shit, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Well, this one's dead too. <laughs> 
That's what, but that's what I mean. The, every five minutes is either goofy, speeded up the film, fight scene, or just these, just people getting shot, 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 but no squibs or little like paintballs, or just like, why are you going undercover? Like the guys going under the fence, because I'm an undercover cop. <laughs> just like terrible lines of dialogue, bad filmmaking. Speeding up the film. (sighs) Characters just disappear. Like, Rob Zadar, he's questioning people. And one of the people he questions is the female cop from earlier. And he's torturing her with grease on her privates. But thankfully, we don't see anything. We just see him dip it. And then we have the girl scream. You know, done respectfully. As you can with that. To be fair. And it doesn't seem like she dies. He even says, you stay there and you cool down. They leave. But she never appears ever in the film again. And she seemed like a main character earlier. So, I mean, you know, you have a fucking main character that just disappears. That's pretty fucking weird. And like the captain of the cops, the captain, police captain says, you know what? I'm probably going to be fired. You guys will probably be fired as well. So, you know, fuck it. You go find them. You kill them all. And when you kill them all, we'll all turn on, turn in our badges. I'm like, it, I agree with Joe Bob Birds. I'm like, do cops, do captains really do that? Can captains really go... Fuck it, we're going to be fired anyway. You go in, you kill them all. I had... A lot of the ending is just, you know, shooting, shooting, shitty fights, shooting. People who don't know how to die on camera. Apparently my camera is dying. Can you stop, please? Fucking shit. Shittiness of Samurai Cup is affecting my webcam. I was saying before, before that... That, you know, the the last chunk of the film is just a bunch of shooting. And uh, granted, it was funny. It was... Hey, I rather... You know what, though? I'd rather have people shooting people than... Newty, potted ninjas, Neil Breen movies, Bo- uh, what the fuck was that called? Robo Vampire. I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this. Hey, shooting people and then they die. Some of them don't know how to die. Like one guy like dies. The like the slowest death scene ever. Again, pretty big body count. You just wish they had a budget to put blood squibs. That'd be much. That'd be even more fun. Uh, you know, fights Robin Zadar. It's a laughable fight. Like Robin Zadar, like his biceps are so big, he can't fucking twirl the sword. So Robin Zadar is like, like this is how he can swing the sword. Like his biceps so big, he can't. Twirl. Like, bad hand at least twirl a little bit. But it's like to speed up the film again. Like I said, this is a bad film. Acting, story, all that jazz. But, I technically, there's a lot of action, bad action. But, it's, for me, it's a lot of stuff to laugh at. It was never boring. At the very least, if you get this DVD, you can watch the Joe Bob Bruce commentary. Listen to it. And it's really entertaining with his commentary. So, uh, I don't... Maybe there's a newer, like, DVD Blu-ray of this. Uh, I would assume it would have the Joe Bob Bruce commentary. I don't know why you wouldn't have it. If you don't, that's a fucking crime. If there's one and it has a commentary track with the people, 
I kind of want to look it up. I'd be curious to give it a look to have them talk about. Actually, you know what? My, I'll take a minute because I gotta start my phone. Sorry about that, guys. I know this would be not the most exciting. Because I kind of want to check out what this is on. I should just cut and edit it, but oh well. I know there was some story about this film was found somewhere and some guys... Like, this was a film that was supposedly lost. And, like, the rumor was that, oh, they found in some castle. That wasn't the case. It was just in some... Something that was dug up and... Hey, what's this? And, uh... I do wish Joe Bob Birds did more of these DVD commentaries. And I know he has the new The Last Drive-In on Shudder. I wish, though, he would do commentary tracks. I think... One time, I don't... He probably never read it, but I mentioned... You know what, man? You should start doing commentary tracks. You know, like Mystery Science Theater 3000, they do their riff tracks... They make a shitload of money out of that. But you do your commentary tracks. For Tetsu Chainsaw Master. Friday the 13th. All this stuff there. They should do that man. I mean he should do that. Damn it. If uh, all the messages would stop. This is what happens when you don't open your phone. For a while. Then all the messages is fucking pile in. Samurai Cop Blu-ray. Samurai Cop Blu-ray. I know this is such great. I don't know exciting content. No, not are you afraid of the dark? The fuck is that coming up for? Yeah, the, is that Samurai Cop? I meant to be... Oh, where the fuck does... Are you afraid of the dark come from Samurai Cop? The fuck is that... Okay, here we go. Yep, there is a Blu-ray. Currently unavailable. Okay. So I couldn't get it even if I wanted to. Came out 2016, the Blu-ray. Remastered? Wow, that guy remastered, really? Jared Akamura, cinematographer Peter Pellion. Says three commentaries. Hmm. Maybe Blu-ray.com will mention it. They're a pretty decent site. Yeah, I can't. <coughs> Yeah, apparently you can't fucking... Well, you might maybe find it on eBay. Let's say, up the price. Commentary 1 with Matt Hannon. Commentary 2 with Mark Frazier. Commentary features 80's Picture House. So they don't have the Joe Bob Briz commentary? Are you fucking kidding me? Why the fuck were you not... Well, granted, because this was done by a different company... But, well, that sucks. So, and Matt Hannon and Mark Frazier, why were they not just on a commentary together? There's a seven-minute interview with the two of them. There's the interview with Red Letter Media. A, sep a single interview with Matt Hannon. Rob Schraub and Edwin A. Santos. Don't know who the hell they are. Yeah, the fact they don't have Joe Bob Briggs commentary, that's fucking shitty. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't know about that then. Yeah, sorry I wasted people's time. I was just curious. So, I guess it was a Blu-ray, but it's 
uh, I looked on Amazon, it was not available. Anyway. With that said, like I said, if you like bad movies, you want to see a so bad as good movie, if you're able to find this DVD, I recommend it for the Joe Bobber's commentary. It's hilarious. It's worth the price alone. But in the film itself, it, it's funny to, to laugh at. So I'll stick with this instead of the Blu-ray. Again, Joe Bob is big winner in my book. Love Joe Bob Briggs. If somehow, Joe Bob, please think about it. Do commentaries. You could charge for it. That'd be fine with me. I would pay for a commentary for Joe Bob Briggs on Friday the 13th films or Chainsaw Master films or whatever. I mean, come on, Joel Bob. If you didn't do it for these movies and Blood Sisters, you know, do one on John Carpenter's The Thing. Like, do one on uh, even Halloween and such. I, I would love to hear it. But that's just my opinion. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.